Hello and welcome to this week's ITPM Flash. My name is Ed Check. It's Sunday the 25th of February. So today's Flash is really outlining how I'm thinking about tech currently and how I'm going to position my book for next quarter's earnings. And first of all, I'm just going to show you a chart. I've split up tech into four indices of my making. And of course, we can see the hyperscalers, the blue line. And then we've got what I call the AI hardware index. That's the orange. The AI software, the green. And then we've got the mid cap tech, the purple. And of course, if we just start with the hyperscalers, and obviously I've, I've actually taken out Tesla for the time being, because we're talking about positioning of what I want to be long. And of course, we've got Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, and Meta, the part of the hyperscalers. Their cloud businesses are seeing huge demand as companies continue to build out their own AI applications. And each of these have got an extra kick at Microsoft. The AI-enabled laptop upgrade cycle may just be gathering speed. Amazon's obviously using AI to boost online sales with enhanced targeting, making sure we all continue to buy stuff we don't really want or need but do anyway. Meta, obviously using AI to boost their share of digital ad spend. NVIDIA, enough said. And of course we have Apple. Now the quants aren't in a good place at all but there's not a lot of desire to bet against them finding a way to be a long-term AI winner. So the blue lines there, I think these are the long-term winners. Size matters. The earnings enhancements, the earnings power on their huge platforms are going to continue to grind up. These companies are simply eating the world. There's certainly no short in this group, I think. If you don't own any you're really a buyer of weakness. This trend will continue. And then, of course, we come to the orange line, my little AI hardware index. And this includes the semis, all hardware and networking. So this index will have NVIDIA, AMD, Micron, the SMCIs, Arista Networks, Junipers, Intel, Dell, IBM, the ARMS, Qualcomms, Broadcoms, Salesforce, and the like. And of course, they've performed the best. And this index is where the earnings are coming through now. They're obviously in phase one as they enable AI to come to life. And this week, of course, NVIDIA's shone a light on 2024 demand and the inevitability of mass adoption. And of course, the numbers are there. NVIDIA clearly has momentum and the numbers to back the rally up and there is more room to run. We get it the picks and shovels argument with the gold rush, and we can see the performance. But we also might remember that Cisco was briefly the biggest company in the world in 2000, as its hardware helped build out the internet infrastructure. But its glory years were relatively short-lived, as it simply enabled the disruptive internet-based winners of today to emerge, and these companies, of course, now dwarf Cisco. Are they shorts now? No. However, then, within this group, there is a bit of dispersion, right? You can look at something like Arista Network. So it's had two years of rapid growth with revenue and earnings over 50% for a couple of years. But that's starting to normalize. Earnings growth and revenue growth sort of 15 and 15 for the next two years. Is it a short? No, it's a great company in the right space. But if we compare that to something like an SMCI, SMCI is only trading on three and a half times sales. So we're starting to see a bit of relative value within this group. But we're all probably buyers of weak on weakness if we're not long anything at the moment. Now, obviously, with NVIDIA, there is the risk that at some point there'll be a competing chip. And obviously, when that happens, the valuation will change quite dramatically. It will still be a great company. It will still be getting plenty of earnings growth. But its headlock on the world maybe has another year to run. Plenty of time for it to rally. And there'll be bumps along the way. Plenty of time to buy on weakness. So. 
I'm not looking for any shorts in the orange, not looking for any shorts in the blue, be a buy run weakness and maintain a long position in one of those names. Now, of course, what brings me to the more interesting green line, in my opinion, is the fact that, depending on who you read, this extra trillion of incremental spending over the next decade is obviously going to hit the software ecosystem and the rest of tech. And whilst NVIDIA is obviously right at the forefront, it won't be at the end. And some of the biggest winners are going to be coming out of the software space. And for every dollar of spending, the multiplier effect to the enterprise and consumer space could be five to ten times. For every dollar spent on NVIDIA or a competitor, five to ten dollars are going to come in to the rest of the sector. And this is what brings me on to my AI software index. And this will have stocks such as Adobe into the Palantir, Unipath, MDB, CrowdStrike, Symbiotic, the Robloxes, Appfolio, and even in the energy sector, the FLNCs, App Loving, these sort of companies. So I want to actually take a minute on Palantir. It's something that I've owned for a while, and post earnings I've rolled, and I'm long again. And this is because I've identified it as one of the scalable software companies that I think might be a long-term winner. And the long-term winners in this space are going to perform and outperform for years. So in a slightly reminiscent sort of return to what's on your mind, I just want to outline what is an obvious clear-cut business model that could be scaling. So when we think of Palantir, we know it's been around for 20 years. It's been working with the US government since 2005. So what does that tell us? It works, it's great kit, secure. Problem is, there's only one US government and if that's your biggest customer, you have a scalability issue. So the ball thesis for me is that this company is gonna scale into very much a commercial business. And if you only have to read last quarter's earnings report to understand the success and scale of their boot camp. So a boot camp is when Palantir calls up a prospective client, says, get your tech wizards in a room with all your data, we'll come in, we'll give you a free demo a day, a week. And what's been so extraordinary is in the last quarter, they signed up for $25 million contracts. And these were signed within weeks of the free demo. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us the value proposition must be extremely clear, extremely obvious, so that the executives see it and just think, yeah, we've got to pull the trigger, we need this, buy it. And funnily enough, Palantir's uh, earnings call has made me far more bullish on 2024 earnings for corporate America. So for all these companies they're going in to see, there must be a lot of value using this sort of software, driving earnings through efficiencies, whatever this black box magic is actually doing. And the other really exciting thing is the clients that they're signing up are in all industries. So that means it's scale. So prior, you might have thought that, you know, it's a government sort of, it's a government sort of business. Now what's their addressable market? Huge. And they might be limited by their sales force. So that's why I'm long Palantir. And I remind myself that it's not a one good earning stocks up 30 or 40%, you sell it and you think job done. I'm trying to identify the scalable business models in AI software, the companies who I think are most likely to win in the medium to long term. Now, if we go back to the chart, I've got to talk briefly about the little purple line. And of course, I'm overweight tech and I want to be especially overweight AI software. And of course, we don't need any shorts. We can just be bullish, but we're at ITPM. We're long short equity options portfolios. We're very focused on risk adjusted returns. So I will have shorts in tech. They're not going to come from the orange line. They're not going to come from the blue line. 
they're going to come from the purple line. And I call these average tech. And when you think about all of these names, or a lot of them, they've had big rallies since November from the Fed pivot, and the markets rallied on five rate cuts, allowing great PE expansion on the basis that earnings are really going to power through, and they might. But we've just had earnings season, and a lot of these stocks have just said, yeah, you know what we said we were going to do last November? We're doing it. They're not really upgrading 24. I don't think they've got a good AI opportunity. I don't think they'll be a long-term winner. And that's where I'm finding my shorts. And of course, I've got to address one other final issue. There's been a lot of chat about the Russell breaking out, the rally broadening out. And I've shown Russell index charts recently. And of course, if that happens and money flows into the mid caps, they could all rally. And if I'm going to get more overweight mid caps on this breakout, I'll probably be in the value space. And I will still be shorting some of the average mid cap tech names. And they've rallied and it's fine. And if the market glides up, maybe they'll all go up as well. But if the market continues to trade higher, I'm sure the palantirs of this world will far outperform what I think is average. So thank you very much. That's how I'm thinking about tech for the next quarter of earnings and beyond. See you soon. Bye-bye.